All right, everybody, welcome to Owls TV. We're here today with uh, Little Owls on Tour. We're here with um, Aaron from Black Bottle Cannabis Company and obviously Luke with Owls. He's going to be touring us around his facility. As you can see, we've got ample, ample plants and uh, we're going to be showing everything to do with how to grow, the licensing, um, you know, handling uh, all the nitty gritty stuff, including aphids. And we're gonna show you the big plants. We're gonna show you the small ones. You're gonna really get to see what a real cannabis farm is like. This is not gonna be, hey, let's show you the biggest, baddest plants all the time and everything's, you know, unicorns and rainbows. We're gonna really get into the nitty gritty and we're all gonna be told what it's like to be growing cannabis. What this video is here to do is to show you what it's like to grow in a state regulated uh, recreational grow. Um, here we have a lot of rules and we have a lot of um, situations that we're doing it the way that we have to do it, not the way that we necessarily want to do it. Um, our company is pretty new. We're not fully funded as far as last year's grow or last year's harvest isn't fully sold yet. We're still bringing products to market. Um, this, next, this year's harvest was really done off of bootstrap funding as well. Um, I think after this last year's harvest is sold and this year's crop is being brought to market, we'll really achieve um, a basis amount of funding to really facilitate the proper amount of effort in the right areas. So what Luke was saying is that we're not gonna bring you all the rainbows and unicorns, and that's really because we're gonna show you what it's like to grow here the way that we have to grow not the way we like to grow. To talk more about as far as the way we like to grow here, here we really believe in sustainability and regenerative cannabis growing. So everything you see is fully organic. So we've been putting in place um, from the start um, different animals, um, different planting and, and growing methods that is more sustainable. And the reasons for that is really to have a better product that can stand up against the competition. There's also a conscience that's involved here that I feel that some of the real reasons I'm here is much beyond me and my pocketbook. It's, it really goes generations down the road to have a legacy in which we, this farm and the community can stand upon. So um, I feel the best way to give um, a legacy is to show my neighbors how it's done through doing it. So I'll show you one of the regulations and we have a thing called metric which is a seed to sale tracking system and then we'll go throughout each plant stage and we'll show you what it's like to basically be on the farm and deal with contingencies you know on the farm you can come to the planning board and you can say yeah this is how much it's going to cost this is what we're going to do but really to be a good farmer you really need to be op opportunistic and you need to um, kind of shield yourself from any downside risk. And really what happens is you have a lot of contingency plans. You're always moving this or moving that direction away or from and towards um, uh, something that might be better than going the other direction. So farming is not straightforward as say processing or wholesaling. You really want to take advantage of the best planned route and have a vision and try to be um, amicable in the way that that actually gets executed to really achieve an optimized production standpoint. Can't wait. Let's get to it. Yeah. 